Tere must everyone to this Toxic Rain Raider build, which will also have a forum guide coming up very soon. I wanted to make this character that is easy to play for both beginners and also experienced players in Path of Exile. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about what the character has before we get into some gameplay footage. So this character has about 5k life, good armor, great evasion, 100% spell suppression, good movement speed, decent chaos res, corrupted blood immunity, and it also has pretty good clearing and pretty good end game bossing except for ubers. And it can also do all map mods except no region. And all of this doesn't even cost that much because this build is not giga expensive. So let's look at how it clear maps and how it kills some bosses and then let's go all over all the gear, the skill tree and the gems. So, for the gear, 
Everything can be shown in the path of building if you want to look uh, there and the path of building also has cleaner versions of all the items and also has better upgrades if you're looking for a better gear than what I have because I did not really invest that much into this build. So let's start, start off with the bow. The thing that you're looking for on your bow is to have pretty high attacks per second because we scale a lot from attack speed. Then you also want to have chaos damage over time multiplier, increase chaos damage over time, plus one level of socketed gems, and then you want either plus two level of socketed bow gems or the better version of this is to have plus two level of socketed support gems because we're using empower and you want your toxic rain gem to be as high level as possible. Then for the helmet, it is important that you have increased mana reservation efficiency of skills both on the implicit as a Eater of Worlds implicit and also on the helmet itself through essences. Then you want to have reduced mana cost of attacks through Searing Exarch and then I suggest life, resists uh, and chance to suppress spell damage as long as you get like your uh, spell damage suppression capped then you can get it anywhere you want on the armor on the helmet boots gloves whatever as long as you get it capped it's fine on the quiver here i have attack speed damage over time multiplier with attack skills life uh, and increased damage with bow skills now you can absolutely get a much better quiver this is a pretty shitty quiver but it works for me then for the amulet i have life i have stats I have plus one level of chaos skill gems and I have non-channeling skills and minus seven total mana cost, which is something you want to have on all your jewelry. Now, this is also a pretty bad amulet and I haven't even anointed it, but you can definitely get something better here. And the anoint that you want to get uh, will also be shown in the guide and in the path of building. Um, for the ring, you want to have life, resists, non-channeling skills of minus 7 total mana cost once again i also opted for some chaos rest and strength here and yeah it's a pretty shitty ring but you can get something better if you want but at least on one of your one of your rings you won't have cursed enemies with despair on hit so here i have that i have life i have some resist and i have the non-channeling skills of minus 7 total mana cost once again on the armor it is extremely important to have the searing exarch implicit modifier flasks gain a charge every three seconds this is very very important for this version of the build and also i have malevolence have increased aura effect and then i just have life and resist on my armor this is also a pretty bad armor you can definitely get something better if you want or have the money for it then on the gloves, I have attack speed with the dew inflict inspires 15% uh, slower. I have life attack speed as well on the uh, gloves themselves, not on the implicit, and then resists. And here it is a very, very important that you have plus one level of socketed AOE gems with the correct number of increased area of effect. The reason why I have 8% is because I have a 23% quality toxic rain. And we will talk a little bit more about that when we get to the gem itself. Why you want to have very precise numbers on the area of effect. Then on the Stygian Vice, I have life, resists, strength which my character needs and some flask effect duration which is also very good because of the flask thing that we're using that i'm going to get to in a second then on the boots uh life resist uh, high movement speed i also have some strength here uh on the implicit you can kind of get whatever you want action speed is really nice as well because we scale a lot from attack speed and uh, that's basically it for the main gear in the skill tree we have a large cluster jewel with unholy grace and wicked pal uh, mediums, Brute for Potency, Wicked Pal there as well. For normal jewels, I just went for things like attack speed, attack speed with bows, life, flask effect duration, things like that. Chaos damage over time multiplier is also really good. Anything that you kind of need as well, like if you need some resist, you can get some resist here. I have lightning, for example, and whatnot. I have uh, intelligence here because I needed some intelligence and so on and so on. Those are the main things that you're looking for in jewels. You can also opt in to go for... Uh, flame and uh, flesh jewels as well and get whatever you feel like i would maybe go for nature's boon from the pathfinder ascendancy to help with the flask management because i'm a really big fan of having permanent uptime on flask without having to do anything with them um other than that uh, getting a uh, malevolence watcher's eye is also really good for damage i don't really have it i should have it but 
I just haven't bothered getting it because the character performs fine for me anyway. But yeah, that's also really good if you want to get that. And then lastly, for flasks, I have Quicksilver with just movement speed. I also have a Granite with armor doing effect. I also have a Jade Flask with evasion doing effect. And I also have this, which is very important. I have a Bismuth Flask with reduced charges per use, or you want something like increased duration or uh, increased uh, charge recovery. And the reason why you want that is because we're using this flask gain a charge every three seconds. And we also have it in the skill tree where utility flask gain one charge every three seconds as well. So because we gain two charges every three seconds and we have a certain amount of flask duration, we have a certain amount of reduced charges per use on this flask. So it consumes 11 out of 40 charges on use. And because we have a certain amount of uh, flask charges gained and things like that, we gain about two to three charges every three seconds. And depending on how long our duration on this flask is, it means that when you have used when charges reach full, the flask can be up all the time. So I'm gaining a lot of elemental resistances from this flask, which is very important to note that I am rest capped due to this flask. So if I don't have this flask active, I am not rest capped. And this is not only to make the character a little bit more budget friendly, so you don't need this crazy gear with high resist on it, but this is also because of the reduced mana cost of skills during effect. If I take this off, my toxic rain costs 15 mana and I can't spam it. But if I have this on, my toxic rain costs two mana and I can spam it. And because of the flask charges gained every three seconds, this flask is always active. But this means that when you are in a map that has reduced flask charges gained, you need to keep an active eye on this flask in order to be rest capped, first of all, but also be able to spam toxic rain. Now, I've not had any problems with that because as long as you're walking around and hitting things, you gain flash charges so fast anyway and stuff like that. But it is something to keep an eye out if you're doing maps that has that mod. So let's talk a little bit about the gems. I have toxic rain with empower support, Efficiency, Mirage Archer, Awakened Void Manipulation, and Awakened Vicious Projectiles. In the gloves, I have some, some Stone Golem. I have Vol Haste, but I don't use the Haste, I only use Vol Haste. I have Withering Step, and I have Vol Blight, but I don't use the Blight, I only use the Vol Blight. And then in the armor, I have another set of Toxic Rain with a Withering Touch, so we wither enemies. Void Manipulation, Focus Ballista, multiple totems, and Ballista totem support as well. So I just spam like this, have a bunch of totems, they shoot with me, bunch of Toxic Rain, bunch of Wither, bunch of damage. In the helmet, I have Enlighten, Malevolence, Grace, and Determination. In the boots, I have Life Tap, Dash, Second Wind, and then Molten Shell. So I use Molten Shell on my left click. I walk around and I just shoot, blah, blah, blah. I use Withering Step sometimes. And then on bosses, I activate Vol Blight and Vol Haste. I pop my totems and I just go to town and blah, blah, blah. They die. Pretty simple. Now, for the skill tree, it basically looks like this. As you can see here, we have some Frenzy Charges. We have some Flask things. We have some... Chaos Rest and Corrupted Blood Immunity. We have Cluster Jewels, some Life Nodes, blah, blah, blah. We have some Skill Effect Duration because Toxic Rain works very well with that. We're playing Raider. We have Way of the Poacher, Quartz Infusion, Rapid Assault, and Avatar of the Chase. And the reason why I went with all of these is because Friends of Charters gives us a good damage boost. Quartz Infusion makes it easy to spell, uh, suppress, and get facing, which is very nice for mapping. Rapid Assault gives us Onslaught, which gives us attack speed, damage, and movement speed, good quality of life. And then Av Avatar of the Chase, gives us even stronger onslaught, which gives us more attack speed, more damage, more movement speed, which is more quality of life, and 10% chance to evade attacks during onslaught. So we get a little bit more tanky. And I know some people rather have Avatar of the Slaughter, but I feel like attack damage doesn't really do that much for us. I don't really feel like we need much more movement speed, and the evasion rating is pretty minor in this case as well. So I opted to go for Avatar of the Chase instead to make the quality of life overall on this character a little bit better. Um, and yeah, the, the skill tree kind of looks like this. There's a few reasons why we have Druidic Rite, 
why we have careful conservationists with the flask mastery and everything like that and also our profane chemistry here with flask mastery that gives us more uh, effect and the reason because of that is because we're doing the flask thing where we have like increased duration reduced charges per use and we want to maintain our bismuth flask at all times and uh, so on and so on so that's kind of why we have stuff like that and everything here is quite understandable why I have it on the duration mastery 10% skill effect duration here we have 10% life uh, yeah that's the mastery here we have 20% increased arrow effect while wielding a bow and we'll get to that later I have the grace has increased mana reservation efficiency here uh, 50 plus life here and then the corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you so we're corrupted blood immune at all times and you don't really have to worry about that and uh, yeah that is basically the skill tree so one last really important note as well that I have to talk about is that toxic rain works like this, that it shoots out a bunch of pods. You can see these pods that explode and they kind of deal damage. So based on user testing, it has been found that 39% increased area of effect on your toxic rain is the best way to try to hit with all pods. So it is very important for you that you hit 39 Three, nine, 39 percent increased air effect on your toxic rain so the way that you do this usually is that you have a toxic rain with quality get that gives increased air effect and since i have 23 percent quality it gives me 11 percent increased air effect otherwise i would have 10 if i had 20 percent quality then on your gloves or on your helmet, you can get plus one level socketed of AOE gems and percentage increased area of effect. And because I have 11% on my toxic rain gem, which you normally would have 10% if you have a 20% quality gem, I therefore need to have 8% increased area of effect on my gloves. So if you have 20% quality on your toxic rain, you need to have 9% percent increased air effect on your gloves or on your helmet and then the last thing that you need is to have this bow mastery 20 percent increased air effect while wielding a bow so 20 and 10 and 9 is 39 but for me it's 20 11 and 8 so i get 39 in the end as well and then you have a higher chance of dealing more damage with your toxic rain and that is basically it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic day. And remember to follow me on Twitch, subscribe here on YouTube and join the Discord if you need any help. And uh, yeah, have a great day.